Hello, in today's math lesson, we're going to look at probability of independent events. We'll go through some examples and talk about probability and statistics. So let's start with two independent events. The probability of two independent events can be found by multiplying the probability of the first event by the probability of the second event. So for example, if you roll two fair six-sided dice, what is the probability that both dice will show an odd number? Well, let's first talk about the probability of the first event or the first dice. And we could be rolling these dice one die and then picking it up and rolling it again, or we could just be rolling two dice at one time. The probability part works the same. So the probability of an odd number, well, we're looking at our successes compared to our total possibilities. A success would be one because it's odd, three because it's odd, and five because it's odd. So there are three possibilities that would be successes out of six different total possibilities. So we have three six, or one half the time. When we pick up and roll a die, it should land on an odd number, one, three, or five. And then we're looking at our second dice, and we have the exact same probability because we're looking for the same thing. We're looking for an odd number that happens three out of every six times or half the time. So our independent events of both of those happening, one and then the other, we would take the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event, one half times one half, one times one is one, two times two is four, so one and four. So that should happen every one out of about every four times when we pick up and roll two dice, they'll both be odd numbers. Now we can also look at this in table form, and we could take our dice, sides one, two, three, four, five, six, sides one, two, three, four, five, six, and we could list all of the different possibilities. There are 36 different combinations that we come up with, everything from one, one to six, six, and all the combinations in between. And so this is also a great way to look at our probability of rolling two dice because we have this table representing the rolling of two dice. And so we just need to go through our table and find the successes. So a success would be in this case that both dice are odd. Well, let's start on our first row. One, one, they're both odd. Two, one, nope. Three, one, and five, one. They're both odd. Nothing on two, because if it contains a two, they're both not odd. But then down here on three, one three would be a success. Three three is a success. Five three is a success. Nothing with fours down on five. One five, three five, five five. So those are all the different combinations that come out with both being odd numbers. And we see that happens nine times. We have nine little circles out of 36 possibilities. And 936 reduces to our one-fourth. So in this case, we could have found the probability of each event, multiplied them together, and got one-fourth. Or we could have looked at a table of rolling two dice and got one-fourth. Let's look at a new example. So if you roll two fair six-sided dice, what is the probability that both dice show a number greater than two? All right, so we're going to look at the probability of the first dice, or dice one. And greater than 2 would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 4 out of 6, which is the same as 2 thirds. So the probability of odd on dice 1 would be 2 thirds. And we have the same probability for the second die. 2 thirds, 4 out of every 6. And to find the probability of rolling either the two dice at the same time or one dice, picking it up and rolling the second dice, we would take our two probabilities, multiply them together, and we get four nights. Two times two is four, three times three is nine. We can do the same thing on our table with our two dice. We made that table with all the different um, combinations that can come from rolling two dice. And for successes, we are looking for that both numbers are greater than two. Well, that doesn't happen in the row with one, doesn't happen in the row with two. Down here with the row of three, it starts to happen. Three, three is a success. Four, three is a success. Five, three, six, three. 
Um, down here that they're both greater than two, not this one, not this one, but here again, three, four, 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 five, four, six, four. Oh, definitely seeing a pattern here. One throws this one out, two throws this one out, but three, five, four, five, 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 six, five, and down right below it, three, six, four, six, five, six, six, six. So we have one, two, three, four, eight, 12, 16 times that happens out of 36. 16 over 36 reduces to four ninths. So when I'm rolling two dice, I can either find the probability of each multiplying together, or I can use a table form. Either way, I get that four out of every nine times I roll a dice, I would expect to get both numbers being greater than two. All right, let's try a different one. Let's say you found a coin and some cards. There are four red, three green, two yellow, and one blue card. And we want to find the probability of a heads, flipping the coin and getting a heads, and then drawing a red card at random. All right, so the probability of my first event, well, heads and tails is the most simple probability we can deal with. There's only two possible outcomes that we're looking for heads, so the probability of getting heads is one half. There's one success out of two possibilities. And then the red card, well, there are four red cards. How many cards are there total? Well, four plus three plus two plus one, there are ten cards. So we have how many successes? Four successes out of ten totals. And then we can multiply our two events together. One half times four tenths and get four over 20, which reduces to one fifth. And if I had reduced four tenths to two fifths, I still would have had one fifth at the end. My reducing would just be different. So probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. You guys try one on your own. You guys try this one, see how you do. Pause the video here, come back and we'll check it. All right, welcome back. We have the same basic problem. You have a coin and found some cards. There are four red, three green, two yellow, and one blue. We want to find the probability of tails on the coin and then drawing a blue card at random. So, probability of tails. Well, that's one success out of two possibilities. The blue card, there is only one blue card out of our ten. So, our probability of drawing a blue card is one tenth. And to find the probability of the two events together, of flipping the tails and then drawing the blue card, one half times one tenth, that'd be one twentieth. So one out of every 20 times, I would expect if I flip the coin, I would get tails. And if I picked a card at random, it would be the blue card. All right, you guys try another one. Pause the video here and try that one. All right, probability of heads. That's one half, one success out of two possibilities. The yellow card, well, there are two yellow cards out of our 10 cards. So we can do two tenths, multiply the two probabilities together. One half times two tenths, we get two twentieths or one tenth. So one out of every 10 times, I would expect to flip the coin, get ahead, draw a card at random, and get a yellow card. What about three independent events? Well, we use dice a lot, so how would we find the probability of rolling three dice? And having, um, we'd find the probability of finding like the probability of the first event, multiplying it by the probability of the second event, multiplying it by the probability of the third event. So we're gonna do it much the same way we would do with the two events, it's just we would multiply by a third probability. We can do the same thing with four things, five things. We could keep adding on if each event doesn't rely on the previous one, it's independent of the other uh, probability. We're not talking about uh, removing cards or removing marbles. We're talking about the same event. If it was the same probability each time, then we could just keep multiplying by the additional events. And I hope that helps you guys get started with probability. Have a great day.